Hey guys, Tanner Flowers here. We are literally just finishing up with this brand new crawl space encapsulation. Welcome to another episode of the Crawl Space Show. Getting ready to show you all kinds of work that we just finished up. We're talking French drains. We're talking stump pumps. We're talking pop-up drains. We, we got stuff I've never even done before. So I'm getting ready to flip the camera around now. Thank you guys throughout this whole thing. You ain't gonna believe the before pictures. Let me let me just throw them before pictures in right now. Look at what we were dealing with and look at this rolling ground. You hear me? Can you believe that? <laughs> Took us four days to level that ground out. You ain't gonna believe what it looks like now. Get ready, cause here we go. First and foremost, great job, Matt Freitag. That door looks great. Randy told me it was excellent. I opened the door up for him a little bit ago. I said, Matt is the master carpenter. Let me just go ahead and show you. He took all this. He took all this to the cabinet shop. Every one of these interior boards have been put through a planer. Yeah, I bet you everybody does that. Not, let me put that, let me, let me turn the flash on just real fast. So as we go in here, I'm gonna set my keys right here for a second. Just reach overhead, guys. Hit the lights. I'm gonna I'm gonna kick my boots off real quick. Mm. Okay, guys. Let me let me just turn, go slow. Look at this, guys. I honestly cannot believe we got it looking this good. I knew we'd get it looking good. We always do. I knew we'd get it looking better than anybody else could ever even think about getting it. But I didn't really think that we could get it this good. Guys, this ground was rolling so high up there into that pipe right there. You couldn't even hardly get under it when we started. So everything you see right there, you can only imagine we literally had to take this dirt down. Like if it was on the ground, we had 12 to 14 inches that was removed under this whole middle mound right here. And we had to do that backside that way as well. Man, this shovel right here. Boy, this is bad news. Look at them serrated edges. This thing's called a, uh, a root slayer. That's bad news. Me and Isaiah and David under here just slaving you guys. Remember that trench that was all the way down through here? It's gone. Try to give you guys a shot of how uneven that dirt actually is. I mean, as you can see from David shoveling right there, that that mound of ground right there is higher than that shovel. So we have literally taken the center of this crawl space floor down. Well, as you can see right there, over 12 inches. So. There has been over a foot of earth removed all the way down through there from the entry. Trying to get all this leveled up. We've got to end up running a French drain line all the way down them piers. They've all got water in them over there right now. You probably can't see it and I'm too tired to even crawl over there. We're getting ready to go to lunch here in just a few minutes. And I just wanted to give all you guys a progress shot of what we've got done so far. You can kind of see how high that mound of dirt right there is. I mean. Good night. Anyway, anyways, guys, we'll talk to you soon. So let me back up to this, <clears throat> to this wall, and show you guys the full crawl space. So here we go. Starting right here, Randy. Going to move forward and just go straight down to the back. I'll cut over and come back this way. Let me flip my hat around so I can actually see before I go head first into one of these boards. You guys will laugh your head off. You wouldn't believe how many times I just dive head first straight into a beam. I'm going to have brain damage one day from this stuff. Okay. Guys, once again, you're looking at a 20 mil fiberglass reinforced poly. 
Over to my right, you will see that P-trap that I plumbed in today. This dehumidifier is a Santa Fe Compact 2 unit. I will slide under there in just a second and give you a better shot of that. Forgot my knee pads and my elbow pads. Luckily, this ground isn't too hard. Uh, let me just slide under here real quick. Uh, show all of you. So, guys, this is a Santa Fe Compact 2. On the front here is the condensate pump kit, which I still got to plug it back up right here. I just had it all turned off a second ago because we were blowing it. We were blowing all the trash out of the crawl space. Make sure I got all this set properly. Check, 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 check. Everything's checked. So we just turned it back on. Moisture levels are currently 66%. Randy, I'm gonna take this monitor for you and take it back uh, with me. I'll just carry it with me here and then I'll take it back to the uh, crawl door and give it to you here shortly. Okay, Randy, remember this big pile of dirt right here that had those uh, wooden columns on it? Surely to goodness, I got a before picture of that. I hope I can put in here to show all you guys. And if you're wondering how in the world did I get that big pile of dirt that, that you're looking at right now, how did, I, how did I get all that? Well, we chiseled it all and had some pick hammers. And this right here is how it turned out. Look at that. That was tough, guys. Here is one of two humidistat fans we had to install under this home. Those humidifats, humidifats. I've seen some humidifat people. Um, these humidistat fans, I like to keep them set around 40% here. They take air from within this crawl space and send it outside the home. Once you do a crawl space encapsulation like what you were seeing here, and everything is sealed up, as you see, this air can tend to become stagnant in the future. And those fans will actually take any stagnant odor that is inside this crawl space and send it outside. Check this out, Randy. I'd like for all of our customers to see every little bit of the work that they paid to have us do. Coming up here right in front of us in about three feet is where that main trench line starts that if you guys have been watching the previous videos there is a drain line French drain line starting right here behind me at the end of this house and it goes all the way down to that far end of the house and down there is where we've got the sump pump basin which you guys will all get a closer shot of all that as I get up there to it here shortly so as we slide under this row of piers here, look at all this level ground, Randy. All this, guys, was the same as the front. Had a big, huge trench over here in the corner to work with. And also this wall directly in front of me up here had, a, had an offset. You'll see in just a second. Notice how that offset runs all the way down through there. Great job, guys, boys. Isaiah and Chance, we have worked our tails off under this job. If you may have uh, already heard me in the previous videos, I had uh, intended for this job to only need one pallet of gravel. Uh, which one pallet of gravel I believe has 63 or 64 bags of drainage gravel and each bag is 50 pounds uh, So you're talking, you know, if there's 64 Bags per pallet you're talking about 3200 pounds per pallet and We got through the first pallet no time at all and you right away. We were going to need a second we got under here the next day. They dropped a second pallet off. About halfway through it, wouldn't you know, we needed another one. So we had to order a third full pallet of drainage gravel to put under this house. That is over 9,000 pounds of rock. 
that was loaded and drug under here 100 percent by hand 100 percent by chance isaiah and yours truly all right guys coming up here you can see the dehumidifier again over here to our right maybe i can uh i've got a real low uh, ac line but i'll try to give you guys a shot of all that just to let you know even in the tricky areas Ooh, look at that perfection we don't miss a beat baby when you call me you know what to expect and you call me when you want the best i have to talk to customers every week calling me looking for half-assed stuff had a guy tell me the other day i don't really care what gets done i just want to get this house ready to be sold well guys there's all kinds of people that you can call and get them to come over there and do that half-assed work you're looking for if that's what you're after don't call me please do not waste my time i got no time for you and i have no interest in participating in any of your half-assed endeavors now on the other hand of the coin or the other side of the coin when you want the very best work that your money can pay for that's when you call me 423-503-0512 when you want it done right you call me when you want something done as quick as you can get it done to get your house sold, call somebody else get somebody come over there and do a cash job for you get them some beer for the weekend because that's what you're going to get and that's what your alternative is so if you want any of this crawl space work done and you know who i am you've seen our videos if you don't use us and you waste your money and that job turns out looking like a big pile of crap like it's going to i think it's hilarious that you wasted your money on that stuff if you knew about me if you didn't know about me i'm sorry i hate it for you i wish you hadn't blowed your money i'm sitting right on top of this connector trench right here because see that trench goes all the way down through here as well and it connects over right here back adjoining that trench which is then routed over to the sump pump basin there's the second humidistat fan look at all that guys perfection Ugh. saw no need to go up higher than the hollow block itself these bricks are all uneven and stuff so didn't really see any need in going all the way up to the top of those bricks coming down here to this far corner randy turn the camera this way again check out those penetrations guys look around those main duck lines coming in oh, wow doesn't even look like the same place randy look at that man excellent job guys excellent job team so proud so proud let's just slip under here crawl around on our belly a little bit more on this good friday check it out guys here is the sump pump basin that all the water is routed to let me get up here see if i can get my hand to stop shaking as much so check it out guys I always like to run a double zip tie over this. I've never had one fall, but you know, this is kind of heavy right here and the way they're going up in like this, I just think it's great to put that there as a little extra security so that that never falls. And I'll go ahead and uh, insert some footage here to show you guys exactly how this works. Okay, not sure if you can uh, see Isaiah or not right there, but there he is. And uh, what we are getting ready to do, you'll see this red water hose we're getting ready to test all this out make sure all the equipment is working properly uh, as it should before we call it uh, a wrap so i say i'm gonna go up there and turn that water on okay give me one second i'll flip this phone around and if you'll look right here i'll put some before footage in right here so that's going to be a full two inch line coming outside of this foundation one elbow running straight down to another elbow which will then discharge 20 feet away from the home to this low point where they already had two kind of drain lines kind of coming that's going to go to a pop-up valve which will discharge this water right in here to this low point uh chance and isaiah getting ready to backfill this now if y'all want to go ahead and start backfilling that and then we'll get that finished up and uh we're going to head to lunch got uh the master carpenter over here matt frytag doing his thing Getting ready to give Randy a brand new crawl space encapsulation. Uh, excuse me, it's crawl space entry door. Uh, we're working on the encapsulation ourselves. So stay tuned, guys. We'll give you another update as soon as we get some more progress made. 
Now, see we got the water hose running all the way around to the front. I didn't see another water hook up anywhere. So, it's the only way to tell if your job's done properly or not, guys. So, there it is. We've just cranked it on. And if everything works properly here in a second, whenever that water fills up inside there where Isaiah is inside that basin, it will trigger that float valve that will send that water up over and out that pipe down 20 feet away from the home into this four inch pop-up line that is a full two inch run all the way from the pump two inch fully all the way to this that is a two inch going into a four inch uh, deal right there all right Uh, let me turn the uh, flash on. You'll notice the float valve is right here, guys. I'll try to, God, gotta be careful. I, can't, I don't want to drop my phone. Notice the water pouring in here. Waiting to see the water level. Put that. Try to give you guys a close-up of what's happening. So as that water level rises within that basin, it's going to trip that in just a second. And this pump's going to kick on. There it goes. Okay, so we know all the pump and everything is working properly now. Let's go outside while that is filling back up again and make sure that this pop-up valve is functioning properly as well and looks like i blew the top off of it right here i may have to adjust this right here a little bit let's see how strong that blows to be 100% honest with you guys, I've never installed a pop-up vent before, or a pop-up drain, whatever you want to, I didn't even mean to say vent. So, let's just sit here for a second, and try to catch that. There we go. May have to do a little bit of adjusting on that just to make sure that it holds in. I just kind of had it set in there in place. Might even, I might even be able to put a little glue on that. And uh, guys, once again, uh, just so that most of you know, it's gonna depend mostly upon where you live and, and how the conditions are with the water table flowing to and from your house. But most sump pump installations like what you have seen here, that pump's not gonna be kicking on very often at all. And within that basin area, I, I, I set that float valve just a little high on purpose because I don't want to set it so low that as soon as a little bit of water gets in there it, it kicks on I want I don't want to kick it on all the time for the people so I try to be sure to set that float valve so it has a little bit of room uh, for play and uh, I always like to check everything before I consider what I have done complete and as you have seen now and verified uh, for everyone viewing that we've got a functioning sump pump now all the plumbing is proper and just got all the thing I'm worried about now I'm just going to sit here and mess with that as soon as I put this phone down and make sure that that green uh, there we go guys it's I don't think it's going to come back out but I'll keep an eye on that and now I've got to go in here and uh, get ready to plumb in the dehumidifier system so stay tuned guys I'll give you guys an update shortly I'm getting ready to go back out now guys coming back up on the entryway thank you so much Randy for letting us do this work for you thank you Sean for uh, telling Randy about us can't say that it's been easy I can't say that it's been easy but man oh man was it ever worth it? Hope you're happy, Randy. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you guys so much. And uh, and don't forget to always hit like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more Crawl Space episodes that will show you exactly how to take care of these problems that you very well may be experiencing inside your house. Thank you so much, guys. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye.